it's hard to be the new guy when everyone's at home. I come into my office and sit here all alone. So text or send an email for I would like to meet and we can social distance and stay apart six feet. No, we are not in person. It hasn't cut our flow. And when we will regather, we really still don't know. We've got some Welcome to First Church of Christ Congregational UCC in Suffield, Connecticut. We are glad that you are joining us for worship. I'm the Reverend Diane Bailey and I'm the Acting Senior Minister here at First Church. We are glad that you are joining us today, whether this is your first time with our virtual worship or if you have been a long time, six month virtual worship with us. We are glad that you are joining us today. It is, would normally be our rally day, our homecoming day, where we would all gather get together from our different parts of the summer and to celebrate and to begin the church year of ministry. But again, we are in the midst of a quarantine and so that is, it, it's difficult. And so we continue our virtual worship and continue to be the church in the world. And that is important that the, we love our building, but we don't have to be defined by our building, that we can continue to be a community a church community where we worship together at home and where we continue to outreach. And so we are glad that you are here today. So friends, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether you believe a little or you believe a lot, you are welcome here. If you doubt a little or you doubt a lot, you are welcome here. So let us worship God together no matter where we are, knowing that we are one in the body of Christ as we worship our loving God. Amen.
light a light in the name of God, who lit the world and breathed a breath of life into me. I will light a light in the name of the Son, who saved the world and stretched out his hand to me. I will light a light in the name of the Spirit who encompasses the world and blesses my soul with yearning. We light three lights for the Trinity of Love. God above us, God aside us, God beneath us, Christ at the beginning, Christ at the end, Christ the Everlasting One. Amen. While today is Rally Day, there is another significance to today. It is also Grandparents Day, and in our opening prayer, we will give thanks for the joy and the blessing of being a grandparent and the many gifts that grandparents bring to our lives. I grew up in a multi-generational household with my grandmother, who was hardworking and dedicated. She came to this country at nine years old and worked very hard and made sacrifices for future generations. The legacy of her faith and her love live on and are represented by her handiwork, blankets that she created for every new member of the family in current and in future generations. I ask you to join me in our opening prayer. And if you happen to have a grandparent or a grandchild near you, maybe place a hand on their shoulder where all of us can outstretch a hand as a sign of our shared blessings. God of the ages, we praise and thank you from generation to generation, you have been our refuge and our strength. You give your gifts of grace for every time, place, and season as we strive within our family to walk in your ways and to remain close to one another and to you. May the young find in our families the strong support for their humanity so that they may grow in truth and love and to be all that you have created them to be. And may our elders experience respect, support, and loving care. Today, we give special thanks for grandparents, and we pray for them. We give thanks for they connect us with our heritage and with our roots. We give thanks for the example of their faith, for the witness of their lives, for the constancy of their love, for their support and their prayers. Loving God, bless our grandparents with long life, happiness, and health. May they remain constant in your love and be living signs of your presence to their children and their grandchildren. Send your spirit to be present with us today in worship. Amen.
This Friday is the beginning of the celebration of Rosh Hashanah, or the Jewish New Year. During this holiday, it's traditional to ask God for forgiveness for the things that we've done wrong in the previous year, and to cast off those sins by throwing a stone, like this one, or a piece of bread into a body of flowing water. It's a beautiful tradition. The Christian calendar won't change to a new year for several months yet, but today is a new beginning of sorts. It marks the beginning of a new church program year, as well as the beginning of an academic year. So with this tradition in mind, as we enter into the great privilege of prayer, let's keep in mind casting off the old and stepping into the new. I'd invite you now to come and pray with me. Ever creating God, like the bulb in the ground in winter, like the trees ready to burst forth in new color, you are always, always creating and making all things new. As we reflect on the past year, forgive us for the times when our pride kept us from acknowledging our need for you. Forgive us for the times that our need to be right kept us from leading with love. And forgive us for the times that we celebrated our own accomplishments, failing to acknowledge that all that we have and all that we are is a gift from you. We lift up to you today this community of faith. Help us to move boldly into this new program year, declaring to our community and the world the never-ending love of our God. In these next moments of silence, we lift up to you the cares and concerns that can only be spoken by the language of the heart. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. These are holy words. Thanks be to God. Amen. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. We just heard two important passages of scripture. In Genesis 15, God tells Abram that he will be the father of many generations and to look 
to the stars in the sky and see how immeasurable they are, how innumerable they are. And that will be the number of generations that Abram will start. And then in Deuteronomy 6, this is a famous Jewish prayer called the Shema. And so Jewish men and many women will recite this as the first thing they do when they wake up and the last thing they do when they go to bed. And so this is a way to say, you are my God and you will guide my day and my night. And so it's an important part of the Jewish religion. And you, will, and you heard that it was, I will love God with all my heart and my soul and my might. And that might sound a little bit familiar because Jesus in Matthew 22 said the same thing, but he added mind to love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your might, your whole body, your whole being. And so as I was reading through these passages, as we are continuing six months into the pandemic, and that it's it's our rally day where we are missing each other and wondering what the fall will look like and how do we continue to worship together at home and it's also grandparents day and so to celebrate our grandparents to take these two scriptures about loving god with all your heart and your might and your soul and then the importance of generation of generation who learn the faith learn how to love god to love god with all your being i found these passages to be really interesting for today to say what would it look like if we started each morning in prayer just a short little 30 second prayer and ended it in the after, in the evening with our day and some of you may um, and I try often, but I would say that I'm not as good at doing it every single day. And so as we look to the fall, how can we help ourselves and our youth, our children, to continue to know what it's like and how to follow in the way of Christ? For it's important for the adults to have this firm foundation to understand how to love and follow Christ, especially in the midst of a pandemic, especially in the midst of a pandemic and quarantine. And so how can we model this for our children? And how can we continue to teach them how to follow in the ways of Christ? Now, we often in our prayer, we will go to prayer when we are struggling or we are in trouble or we are in desperate need of help. And that is okay. I mean, many of us have done that. All of us, I'm sure, have done that. And so how do we incorporate prayer every day in our lives when we feel like we are doing okay, when things are going well? And how do we teach our children this? But we really need to look to Christ, to the resurrection, and to see how Jesus saw the world and how do we see the world? Because I think that many of us are afraid to really follow in the ways of Jesus the Christ. There's that bit of fear that we will learn about it. We will do it in our mind, but we are afraid of if we go all in, how following in the ways of Christ, how God will transform and disrupt our lives because we know that God does amazing and impossible things when we least expect it so a lot of us keep our faith at a distance and we do it in sort of you know with a shield around but that also gives us a, so we stay in our area of fear our locus of fear and we don't let God really work in and among and through us. And so what would that look like? What would it be to really relinquish our fears and to follow in the ways of Jesus? To love the sick, to feed the hungry, 
and to care for the sick, to love everyone, right? To visit the prisoner, all difficult things to do in the midst of a quarantine. But we are finding ways to do it as the church. We are finding ways with social distancing and with connecting to one another through technology and through the phone and through cards and letters. And for those who are healthier and who are comfortable going out, running errands for one another. And today, we, on this Sunday, we were doing a food drive-by so that we collect food for our, our neighbor, for the Suffield Community Aid. And so how do we continue to grow our faith when we are apart? And when there's so much chaos and uncertainty in this time, when we don't know what the next year will look like, and we don't have the, the solid foundation of coming and touching and being in the church, how do we continue in our faith? And I would offer that this is where we need to start with prayer, to reach out with one another, and then to teach our children. And grandparents, this is where teach your grandchildren or teach your young neighbors. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to offer thanksgiving and gratitude for the good earth that God has offered to us. Teach them about the ways that we can follow in the ways of Jesus Christ. As the Shema says, you have to pass it down from generation to generation. Parents, teach your children well. And so I commit to you that we should try to pray daily, whether we think we need it or not. And I also say, and I joke with often, is that we often our prayers are grocery lists, telling God exactly what we want. But to take a few minutes each day to pray and to listen. So to say, take a piece of scripture, or it could be the Shema, the Deuteronomy 6, or any part of scripture that really resonates with you. And use that as your daily prayer in the morning when you first wake up with your cup of coffee and with as you go to bed in the evening and any time in between. For me, my prayer that I go to most from scripture is from Philippians 4, and it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that gives me comfort. It also gives me strength. It gives me a firm foundation when I have no idea where I am going. And so as we go into this, into this fall, continuing in quarantine, Know that each one of us is here to love and to support you, to pray with you, to be with you in whatever way that might look. And let us commit to our young people to have those conversations about faith, to have those conversations about prayer, to incorporate prayer in your day, even if it's grace in the evening before a meal, to keep that part of our faith going while we are apart. It is oh so important for generations and generations to come. So friends, this is a beautiful day and it is a beautiful start to our church year. We don't know what it's going to look like, but that's okay. We're taking the first step together, even though we are apart. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We come now to the close of our service and we are glad that you are here with us. And after the benediction, there will be a photo montage of everything that we did in our summer quarantine. And so I hope you enjoy our photo montage of the many people in First Church who submitted what they did over the summer. And despite being in quarantine, we indeed had fun in God's creation. So let us go now knowing the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the comfort and the challenge of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
come now to the close of our service and we are glad that you are here with us. And after the benediction, there will be a photo montage of everything that we did in our summer quarantine. And so I hope you enjoy our photo montage of the many people in First Church who submitted what they did over the summer. And despite being in quarantine, we indeed had fun in God's creation. So let us go now knowing the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the comfort and the challenge of the Holy Spirit. Amen.